What's up, everybody? We are going to cover painted tiles today. And to start out, um, our local hardware store Lowe's uh, or Home Depot or whatever you guys have access to should have something similar to this six by six inch ceramic glossy tile. Um, starting out with something like this is going to be the way to go. Of course, you can get larger sizes, smaller sizes, whatever you want to do. Um, but at 30 cents a piece, that's relatively affordable and a substrate you can practice on and and easily perfect your, your process. Um, secondary, we have Fusion all-in-one matte and satin. Either one's gonna be fine. This is a nice uh, thin layer of paint, which is what you're gonna need to be able to um, really lay a thin coat so that the laser doesn't have to use a lot of power to remove one layer. All right, so let's go through the process. Um, I do have one here that I'm gonna try a triple layer on, but we're not gonna cover that today. If this does work, then gonna, it's gonna be pretty much the same process as doing a two layer tile, a two layer uh, of color. It's just gonna be one extra layer. I am going to use glossy on this one because I, I, I want it to be a little bit more durable and I don't want to go through it as easily. And, and if it works, you'll see exactly why. So on these, uh, I'm going to say we're going to do a light coat of red. Um, and then we will do our top layer of satin black. And I pre-clean these. I usually will use acetone. Um, I will even heat them up a little bit to get any type of oil residue off of it uh, with my blowtorch. Um, but otherwise, fairly simple, smooth, even coats, and that should take care of it. Um, all right, let's get these painted. All right, so as you can see, nice even layers. Um, I do have it propped up at a little bit of an angle only because paint cans don't like to spray facing down. Um, so if you can have them propped up just a little bit, it will help you apply the coat evenly. I'm going to slide this over into the sun, let it dry a little bit, and then I will put on the second layer. I'm very impatient. Um, that's why I use these uh, Fusion All-in-Ones. They tend to dry pretty quickly, uh, especially if you let it sit in the sun for a moment. Um, but if you can manage having a little bit more patience than I do, let it dry. All right, let's come back to this with the second layer. All right, guys, well, I had a spray can that was almost empty, so I had to kind of really get whatever was left out of that. Um, all right, so we're gonna let those dry, and then we are going to now just discuss quickly the processes in light burn or half tone in Photoshop, and I'm sure these can translate over into Corel, but I get it, not all everybody has light burn or the ability to run light burn, so if we basically process this in Corel or, or Photoshop, you can achieve the uh, a very similar goal in the half tone. And the reason why we're using halftone on this is because of the way it lays down the dots. Okay, so this part of the process is going to be for those of you that don't have light burn. Um, we're going to convert, we're going to resize the photo. We're going to convert it over to a halftone image so that you can bring it right into your laser communication software and basically use a pass through because the photo's already been prepped. Um, and then laser, laser that as if you would a photograv, a image R, um, any of these one touch softwares. Um, so we're going to process it right in Photoshop. Um, it is something that you can do in several different, uh, other photo editing softwares. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, first of all, I have already sized the photo. Um, well, I've, I've already cropped the photo 
to be a square um, because we're going to be putting it on a six by six tile. Um, let's go over to image and image size. It's going to be a little large, um, so we can shrink this down to six inches and then resolution is huge. Um, if you're starting out with a good quality photo, um, I always recommend trying to send it over to, at least over to Lightburn at a thousand DPI. Um, you know, a lot of these image processing softwares like Photograv, you have to match the DPI and be very concerned about what resolution you're using. Um, with Lightburn, you don't because it will automatically resample it based on what you're trying to send to the laser, uh, which is phenomenal. It's, uh, it does all of the heavy lifting internally and you don't have to worry about it. You just bring over the best quality stuff that you can. But for this one, um, we're still gonna use a thousand so that it can reproduce this halftone um, pattern to the best quality that we can. So I'm gonna click OK. We got it by a six by six, and the resolution is a thousand. Now let that think for a second. The next step is going to be converting it over to grayscale so that we can create a bitmap. So we go to image and we change the modes. And again, a lot of this stuff will transfer over to, um, to Corel or Affinity software, whatever you're using for your photo edits, um, you're just going to have to find out how to use a halftone and some of these features. So I'm going to grayscale it. <clears throat> and at this point, the halftone will be available to me. So I'm going to go back over to image, mode, and bitmap. It's going to flatten the layer, and then it's going to ask you uh, what the output resolution you want it to be. Now this is the spot that I will match. I will match my input resolution to 1000 dpi. Um, the method, you have a couple different methods and we're trying to do the halftone screen. The frequency. This is the amount of dots. Um, the, for those of you that use Lightburn, this is the uh, cells per inch. Um, we have a little bit more control here as opposed to in Lightburn. Um, I'm gonna do 400 cells per inch, or dots per inch, or whatever it's going to be. Um, I'm gonna do 33 degrees. I kinda like that a little bit better than the 22.5, and that's, um, I'll show you when we get into Lightburn, but that is just the angle at which it lays the dots. So if I had a 90 degree angle, you would actually see that pattern going up and down or left and right. Um, we want to try to confuse the eyes, so we want to make it kind of a, a strange angle to be able to, uh, to basically confuse the eyes with the pattern layout. Uh, you can pick the different shapes of the halftone. I'm going to pick round, and this way it's just straight up dots, and OK. So it looks really bad when, depending on your zoom level, uh, if I zoom in, we can actually see the dot formations. And the heavily shaded areas are more solid, and then, you know, as it goes to whites, the dots decrease. And this is what a dithering or a half tone is going to do. It's just turning in all the shades to uh, a dot formation so that it can be laid down by the laser easily. All right. Moving on, and you know, so that you guys know, uh, let me go back a step. So that you know, um, if you're spending money on some of these one-touch scripts, um, they're generic. They don't consider um, they, they. What they're really considering is that you're break, bringing in a a photo like this that's high quality off the internet that you downloaded. It's not considering the fact that you have to adjust multiple things to get it to engrave uh, correctly. So there really is no such thing as a, a one-touch um, when it comes to photos that you may get off of your phone or somebody, you know, a client sends you. But I want to show you what the script does so that you know what you're paying for. Um, if we go to, let's see, 
file, scripts, uh, image processor, and this is the Photoshop script. Uh, we're going to run it. So it's going to go through a couple different steps here. And I'm going to show you exactly what those steps are so, so you know what you're getting. You know, and, and here, here's a script, you know, here's the dot formation. Um, if we go to our history, and you guys could do this on your own, um, basically it converted it to grayscale like we did in, in the beginning of this part of the video. Uh, it did a slight adjustment on brightness and contrast. It did an unsharpened mask, and then it did the bitmap or halftone conversion like we did. So it's very easy to do this on your own um, and get a better result. Uh, because you're customizing or adjusting per the photo, you know, per per the issues that you have with the photo you're working with. Uh, that said, let's go back again. So once I have that halftone created, um, I will export it, and I'm going to export it as a large image. Um, we already have the size, so we'll go to export as a PNG. And as far as the photo edits, um, you can always watch my photo prep part one, photo prep part two, and that'll explain how to take some photos that are difficult um, and get those ready for engraving. But uh, if you needed to and you don't have light burn, you can use these processes that we just went over for half toning um, and apply those to those photos and bring them right over to your, your laser communication software. So I would just rename my file and uh, I, I'm saving it as a PNG. Again, uh, file. And why do we save it as a PNG? PNG is a lossless file so you can resize without messing up uh, the quality of the photo. And it also maintains transparency. So if you did remove the background, um, then you would be able to save that with no backgrounds in it, otherwise a bitmap or JPEG will add the boundaries in. So if your canvas size is larger um, than the photo, so if your canvas size is here and you've erased all of this background information, it's going to add a white or black background depending on what you choose. Um, and then if you're doing a negative, uh, you're going to have to that's just a, a complicating factor when you're engraving. So save as a PNG, uh, make sure the background's removed and it will stay removed. All right, let's go over to Lightburn. For those of you that don't have Lightburn, um, you guys can join us and see what, what that will do now. Okay, and uh, real quick for those of you that don't have Lightburn, I brought, I brought the half-toned one in here just so you can see where my settings would be. Um, of course, do not go off of my speed and power uh, or my DPI um, because I am using a 30 watt laser. I'm using a Beam Buddy lens. Um, I have everything very finely tuned to be able to produce the smallest dot I possibly can and get the highest DPI I can. Um, that said, we'd be using pass through. And very important, if you're creating a half tone, or if you're dithering or processing the photos outside of your software, outside of RDWorks, outside of LaserCut, outside of uh, Lightburn, you need to use a pass-through. It may be called different things in different programs, but uh, basically you're telling the software, do not process this, I've already processed it. Um, if you don't have this on, then Lightburn is going to try to use one of its processes on top of the process you already did, which will basically eliminate some of your photo quality. Um, so we keep pass through on for sending over an already processed photo. The rest is up to you as far as what, um, what your speed and power is. You know your machine um, and its capabilities. Now, when you process a photo like this, you don't have control over the DPI, um, at least in, in Lightburn. 
uh, it's going to base it off of what you've done already. Um, that's the whole idea of pass through. So you may have to adjust the the DPI on the way out of, of your photo editing software. All right, so that covers the halftone or processed photo um, in Lightburn and you know in, in other other programs too. Um, let's get rid of this one. So this is the area where, where a lot of people get confused and don't know what to pick. Um, each of these is described as you go through them and I can tell you you are more than likely going to be using Dither, Stucky, Jarvis, Halftone, or Grayscale depending on what you're doing. Grayscale will be for a three-dimensional um, engrave or um, 3D relief is what it's considered, uh, where basically the laser is using your min and max power, and this would be your min, that would be your max, unless you had it inverted, then it would be reversed uh, or negative. Um, and we're gonna do a totally different video on, on how to do that. Um, sketch is kind of cool. Um, it's going to take Basically, uh, let's change the DPI over here just because it's just DPI so we can show you quickly and it can process it fast. So that would be your sketch. Um, so you can get creative with some of these different um, processes that Lightburn has. We're going to use Halftone. Halftone, um, from my experience, when removing thin layers of paint is going to yield the best result as far as photo replication. Um, it is using really, really small dots and you can push the DPI past what you can with, with any of the other processes. Um, so the main thing to, to do in here um, is your cells per inch. We're gonna do 200 and if you were watching the Photoshop version, we were able to go up to 400. Um, I'm making the angle, and we were discussing the angle in Photoshop as well. If I change this to 45 degrees, you can see, you can, you know, it's self-evident that, that there is a pattern there. That pattern is very self-evident, and the whole idea behind that is to confuse the eye. Um, I've been using 33 for a while because I just like the way it, it, it lays it out. Even the industry standard of print, which is... 22.5, I still kind of see um, some patterning. So I've been trying the 33 and I've, I've liked it so far. Um, beyond those, these two settings for halftone, the rest is going to be up to what your, your material is for speed. Um, keep in mind that you are trying to lay down these little tiny dots. So the faster you go, the more likely it is that you will be missing them. The tube can cycle fast. It can turn on, turn off <laughs> really fast, but um, you're taking the chance of missing details. Uh, we don't want to do a, uh, we do want to do a negative because we're working with a black surface, trying to remove the paint to reveal white. So it's going to be opposite of what we typically engrave. Um, power, you're going to be right at the threshold of removing the paint. So this might be something you're gonna to have to test a little bit to see exactly where you're going to be, um, but it's pretty low typically. I don't think I go anywhere above 15% power on my 30 watt laser. So you could imagine that with a 100 watt, you may be even a little lower than, uh, than that, you know, somewhere around the firing threshold. Uh, which is probably going to be somewhere between 6 and 11% and power. Um, min power doesn't matter, not referenced for this type of engraving. Um, and let's see, half tone. Your, your DPI output is going to depend heavily on one, your wattage, uh, and two, your, the size of your, your lens. Um, if you're using a beam buddy or a 
1.5 inch lens, you could probably push the limits a little bit more. Um, since I am using a really, really finely tuned um, laser that's only 30 watts, I'm able to exceed some of the warnings that we get from from half to or from from light burn. If I go over, like if I did 1600 DPI, um, I'm 600 DPI over what light burn thinks is possible with a standard machine. Um, I, I'm not a standard machine at this point because I am using a beam buddy. Um, my optics and my alignment are perfect. Um, everything is cleaned. So I'm ready to go. This is a number that you're going to have to push and see. The higher the DPI um, and the lower the quality of optics and, and you know basically if you're pushing your machine past what it's capable of you're going to be defeating the purpose by trying to exceed the DPI. You, uh, you'll start removing detail rather than putting detail down. So this is another place to uh, to play around uh, don't ask anybody else buy those tiles start spraying them and start messing around because your machine its setup its alignment its lens is different than anybody else's your your firing point is different than than the next person um, so find out what your machine is capable of and go from there see so, yeah, we're gonna get this warning but I know that my machine, I can almost pull off 2000 DPI with, with the machine, how I have it set up in halftone. 2000 DPI on some of the other processes is impossible. Let's do a preview real quick. <clears throat> and it may take a second because it is a large photo with 1600 DPI. And then we'll just zoom in to show you exactly what we're going to be getting. All right, and there you go. And this is what it's going to be trying to lay down. All of these little tiny dots, all of these darker areas, the lighter areas. And this is going to yield an incredible result. One last thing to note is that to protect the, the layer of paint, you may want to put a layer of acrylic coating or some type of poly coating on. Um, we're using the water-based ones because it's not very harsh and it tends to not pick up the paint or break down the paint and pull it away from the tile. And thanks guys for joining us for another House of Lasers tutorial. Uh, make sure you hit the like and the subscribe button below and we will do our best to continue to create new content and tutorials on how to laser different types of substrates. Appreciate it. Have a great one. <laughs>